Isn't that in the back? Isn't that isn't that the, the, the police report? Isn't that the line of corn? <laughs> <laughs> talk to me. I thought we would start with facts. Perhaps you confirm your age. <laughs> right, right. Now, one never asks a woman her age. Uh, my apologies. I've been told that you're 26. Do you care to confirm that? Let's just say I'm younger than Archie. <laughs> All right. You live in New York City, is that correct? That is correct. I have a penthouse on East 63rd Street. I have a note here that you also live at the Ritz. And the Churchill. Archie's not very good with details. <laughs> he, Mr. Stout confirmed it. He once wrote a letter to Jane Cleland uh, saying that, try as he might, he couldn't get Archie to pay attention to details. <laughs> then uh, I'm extra appreciative that you've agreed to talk to me today. I've uh, heard your apartment is beautifully decorated. Thank you. What are your favorite objects? Well, I like it all, of course, because I picked everything out. But I am especially fond of the 19 by 34 Kashan, a garden pattern in seven colors. There's the Renoir, the Monet, the Cezanne. There's the off-white grand piano. It's hard to pick one object. That sounds beautiful. You also have a home in Westchester County, don't you? Yes, a little place in Katona called The Glade. <laughs> and then there is Bar J.R. Ranch in Lame Horse, Montana. What's your occupation? Occupation? <laughs> <laughs> well, how do you spend your time? If you asked Archie, he would say, I do good. I attend functions, I write checks to worthy causes. I try to help people who need help by connecting them with other people who can provide help. Oh, I shop. <laughs> <laughs> I understand that you're able to live this way because you inherited a fortune. From my father, yes, he did very well. Your father was important in the development of New York City, wasn't he? Tell us a bit about him. Yes. He, nowadays, one would call it infrastructure. <laughs> but of course, at the time, he laid the sewers. We're simple folk. <laughs> he made $8 million laying the sewers, and then he went into politics. He didn't run for anything. He wouldn't run. He's more a backroom sort of fellow. Irish proud. Me too. <laughs> he sounds like an impressive man. Have you ever considered writing a book about him? Oh, yes. Well, not me writing it, but yes, I'd love to. I tried twice. I once asked Wade Worthy to do it. He spent a whole summer in Montana. That was a bust and a half. <laughs> <laughs> then I asked a, a recent graduate from Smith. I asked her to do it. That was Amy DeNovo. That didn't work out either. It occurs to me, you're quite a well-respected journalist. Archie speaks very highly of both your talent and your integrity. Would you take on the project? No. <laughs> <laughs> How did you and Archie meet? Oh, uh, we met at a friend's place upstate. Escamillo. I call him Escamillo. Why do you call him that? Well, you know, it's a reference from the opera Carmen. Uh, he was the bullfighter. Archie was in a pasture running from a bull. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to say that he looked like a bullfighter, but he did look dashing. <laughs> <laughs> did you become friends right away? Oh, yes. I knew right away we were going to be friends. <laughs> <laughs> Why was that? What was it about him? Oh, well, any girl could take one look at him and know that they were going to be friends. <laughs> <laughs> I thought Archie told Mr. Wolf that he liked you about, uh, what he liked the most about you was your spiritual side. <laughs> yes. That's what I was referring to. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yeah, spiritual. You spend a lot of time dancing, I understand. Dancing, and we go to baseball games, and fights. Uh, we, oh, we spend a lot of time together. We stay in sometimes. <laughs> uh, given how close you are, is it true that Archie set you up with another man? Yes, that did happen. Pete Roeder. That was quite an experience. <laughs> the, um, was he um, uh, also known by another name, by any chance? All right, I know I can trust your integrity, and you'll keep the secret. It was Mr. Wolf. Really? <laughs> yeah, they needed help on a case, and Archie called and asked me to get in a car with a man named Pete Roeder. Uh-huh. And 
be intimate. You know, kiss, hug, that sort of thing. Archie's actually quite a bit of a prude, so I knew, right then and there, there was only one man on earth who'd do that for. That would be Mr. Wolf. What happened? Well, just for fun, I was a little enthusiastic. <laughs> <laughs> what was uh, Mr. Wolf's reaction to your enthusiasm? He has a flair. <laughs> I must say, it's quite something. As far as I know, I'm the only woman in America ever to have necked with Nero Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite a story. Um, uh, what would you say that you and, and Archie, uh, are you examples of opposites attracting by any chance? No, I actually think we're quite similar. Except, of course, he backs into parking places and I don't. And he, he did think my sending shipping sagebrush in from Montana to New York was a little over the top. Would you say that uh, uh, sagebrush, why would you import sagebrush to New York? Well, I'd arranged for the city to close down East 63rd Street for the rodeo, the rodeo <coughs> contest. And in order to do that, you have to create the proper milieu. So you have to import sagebrush. I see, but, but Archie didn't like that, did he? Oh, no, he liked it. He just thought it was absurd. <laughs> Does he think other things that you do are absurd? No. <laughs> In addition to roping contests, I, I know you often have poets read their work at your house. Does Archie like poetry? He likes some. He likes it when I read him poetry. He likes Keats. You play Chopin on the piano. Yeah, I, Archie says you're very talented. How oh, lovely, thank you. Um, I, you said earlier that you and Archie spent a lot of time together. I believe you followed him to DC once, didn't you? I wouldn't say I followed him. I went there to find him. I was mad. I called him 50 times, I sent 40 telegrams, and he wasn't responding. I used enough pull to get my photo on the cover of Time, no, Life, wasn't it? Life magazine. <laughs> to find out where he was. I found out which plane he was going to be on before he knew he was going to be on that plane. And I got myself a seat on it. We had a little scene. It sounds like that was a very emotional moment for you. Yeah, I came close to killing him. <laughs> <laughs> I went out for a drink, finally, and I find him dancing with another girl at the Flamingo. Turns out she was a client. It was all business. We made up. Mm. Uh, I see we're almost out of time, and we still need to get some photographs. One last question. Will you and Archie ever marry? Archie? No. No. I don't see Archie marrying. I just don't think he's the marrying kind. I don't think I'll marry either, because largely, for women, marriage is an economic arrangement. And luckily, I don't need the money. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's the photographer. I'll go get him. Um, photographer, uh, come here, Sean. Come, hurry. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you.